A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shilo, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. The Rav, as well as others, speak of Torah Eretz Yisrael, but to many people it is not clear to what this term refers. What about a young Jew, for example, who comes to Israel to study in yeshiva for a year? Is that Torah Eretz Yisrael? Can the Rav elaborate, please? Before we try and define uh, what Torah Eretz Yisrael is, and we'll, we'll, I will try and bring a couple of examples, let us first discuss what Torah Eretz Yisrael is not. The Talmud Bavli in Masechet Shabbat Daf Lamed Aleph says as follows, that when a person passes away and is required to give an account of his or her actions in this world, one of the questions that the person is asked is Sipitha li shu'ah, which means, did you truly yearn for and look forward to the Yeshua? And the word Yeshua, normally translated as redemption or, or something like that, uh, is explained by Rashi as meaning the words and the promises and the forecasts of the Nevi'im. In other words, when the Nevi'im discuss the, uh, the Jewish people returning to their land and reconstituting their, their national existence, their national sovereignty, and their national life in their homeland according to the Torah, that is the general thrust of much of what we find in the Nevi'im, in the Prophets. The question the person is asked, therefore, says the Talmud and explains Rashi, is did you really look forward to, to these events? In other words, did you connect to these events? Did this make a difference to you? Was this part of your uh, existence as a Jew? Because it's possible for a Jew to be uh, ostensibly a good Jew, a religious Jew, uh, a Jew who believes in God, living uh, in Chutzlaret, performing uh, the Misworth, and yet, frankly, these issues of when, if, how the Jewish people will return to Eretz Yisrael and what will happen at that time, and, and uh, whether you're concerned about these things, whether it makes a difference, whether it speaks to you, whether all this resonates with you, uh, it's quite possible to be a Jew uh, for whom these things mean next to nothing, and yet ostensibly be a very good Jew. So the Gemara is telling us that such a person is not really such a good Jew. After all, if you cannot say, if you cannot answer that question honestly in the affirmative, if you cannot say about yourself, Yes, Sipitali Shu'a, I really did look forward, I yearned for these things, this was an essential part of my being, and I always felt that something was missing, uh, as long as this had not yet taken place. If a person cannot answer in that fashion, then that person was not Sipitali Shu'a, he was not really looking forward to, it was not part of his uh, world outlook, it was not part of his Jewish existence, and that is a very serious problem. So tells us the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat. So a person who doesn't look forward to these things, who doesn't think about these things, a person who does not make these ideas of Yeshua uh, an essential part of, of the Jewish philosophy and outlook, and therefore uh, because outlook determines action. Outlook, philosophy, one's general fundamental ideas according to, one, uh, according to which one lives one's life, these things uh, in the final analysis will decide what you concentrate on and what you think about, what you dwell upon. If a person is not thinking in those terms, then that is a serious problem. Uh, and such a person is clearly not connected 
to the, to the Torah, because the Torah is the Torah of Eretz Israel. There is only one true, authentic Torah, and that is the Torah of Eretz Israel. If a person is not thinking in, in terms of Torah Eretz Israel, he's not thinking in terms of the Yeshua, which is intrinsically bound up with uh, Eretz Israel, with the Jewish people's existence in Eretz Israel now and in the future, then that is not truly Torah. And it's not truly Torah Eretz Israel because Torah and Torah Eretz Israel are really one and the same thing. Then what is Torah Eretz Israel? Before I answer that question directly, I want to mention another Gemara that we find also in the Talmud Bavli, in Musechet Bava Metzi'ah, Daf Pehe. There it states that uh, Rabbi Zera says as follows, Ki Salik, the Ar'adi Israel, when he came from Bavel to Eretz Israel, he came up literally to Eretz Israel. Yathev Me'at Tha'aniyatha, he fasted, he decreed upon himself, he took upon himself to fast 100 fasts on 100 different days. Uh, in order to forget the Torah of Bavel, of Chutzlar, it's of the Galut that he had learned when in Bavel, which is where he came from, where he grew up, where he studied Torah under, under the greatest of the sages in Bavel. So that this learning of Torah that he had learned in Chutzlar, it would not uh, disturb or confuse or hold him back. So it says in the Gemara and Musechet Bava Metzia. In other words, to come to Eretz Yisrael, to study Torah using the same frame of mind, the same assumptions, the same methodologies, the same, uh, same approach to the study of Torah, to the concepts of the Torah, to what Torah is in general. Uh, that is not Torah Eretz Yisrael. If you come to Eretz Yisrael and study Torah as if you were in Brooklyn or in Amsterdam, then that is not Torah Eretz Yisrael. This is what we learned from Rabbi Zera. Rabbi Zera knew that if I now have moved to Eretz Yisrael and the Torah here is of a completely different order of magnitude, and on a different level altogether, different plane, of spiritual, intellectual uh, existence than the Torah of Chutz Laaretz, then I have to actively shed from, from myself, as it were, like a snake sheds its skin. I have to shed that Torah, that is not as to say to forget everything one learned, but to move on, on into a new mode, into a new phase, in order to be able to study and internalize and understand the Torah in a much more profound and authentic way. So, in answer to your question, is a young person who comes from, Eretz, uh, from Chutzlar to Eretz Yisrael to study Torah for a year or two, uh, is that enough in order to qualify, so to speak, for the term uh, Torah Eretz Yisrael? Is that connecting to Torah Eretz Yisrael? I'm afraid the answer is no. And this is not my answer. This is Rabbi Zera's answer. As for the question, what is Torah Eretz Yisrael? Well, the truth is one could write, and one should probably write a book, or many books on this subject. But let us uh, begin at the beginning. Let us begin with some very simple, fundamental concepts. Rav Kook, in uh, the very first paragraph of the book known as Oroth, speaks about the difference between the Yahadut of the Galuth and the Yadut of Eretz Yisrael. What is the difference, he says? He says the only true form, true that is to say sustainable and vibrant form of Torah in Chutz Laaretz is a Torah which is based on exactly those words that we mentioned from Masechet Shabbat. Sipitha Yeshua. Did you look forward to, were you living those ideas of Yeshua? Am Yisrael, in Eretz Yisrael, in the future, even if it hasn't yet happened in your own time, are you looking forward? Is this something which speaks to you? Is this something which resonates with you? If Judaism in Chutz Laaretz is based on that tzipiyal Yeshua, on that looking forward, that yearning, then it is still a viable system. 
If it hasn't got that, then it's not truly a viable system at all, and eventually it will cease to exist. On the other hand, says Rav Kook, what is the Torah, or what, what is the Yeshua? The Yeshua is the Torah, or is the Yahadut, is the Judaism that Jews live in Eretz Yisrael. That is the Yeshua. When you are asked the question, when, uh, when a person dies and is asked that question, Sipitha li Yeshua, the question is, did you look forward to the Yahadut, the existence of the Jewish people as a nation, and that form of Torah, of Jewish civilization, and culture, and thought, and, and action, that kind of a Jewish society described by the Torah, did you look forward to that, to that thing called the Yeshua? The Yeshua, says Rav Kook, is, is the Torah, is the Yahadut of Eretz Yisrael. So the Torah of Eretz Yisrael is not uh, a technical term. It's a very uh, deep and profound concept because the Torah of, of the Gola, Galuth or the Gola, the Torah of Chutz Laaretz, is at best a, uh, some kind of a life support system. It's a way to maintain the national body of the Jewish people at some level of existence, just like you maintain uh, the vital functions of the body of a human being in a coma who's not dead and you don't want them to die so you keep them alive but they're not really alive, they're not really functional, they're not really there. In the same way the Jewish people in Chutz Laaretz are not really there, that's the truth. Many people may not like to hear this truth but that is the truth, that is the fact. The Yahadud of Chutz Laaretz is simply about surviving till the next generation so that eventually we can get to the point of Yeshua, so we can uh, and therefore we have to be Metzapeli Yeshua, as the Gemara tells us. The Torah of Eretz Yisrael is the, is the true Torah. It's not as if there are two versions of the Torah, you can choose whichever you like, the Torah of Chutz Laaretz or the Torah of Eretz Yisrael. It's not so. There is only one true, authentic, comprehensive, majestic, and profound Torah, and that is a Torah as we find it in the Tanakh. That is a Torah of Eretz Yisrael. As it... Uh, as it finds its expression in all, in the first of all in the Tanakh and later in all the other uh, Torah sources which originate in Eretz Yisrael, whether it's the Mishnah or the Tamud Yerushalmi, etc. Whereas uh, those sources, those books which originate in the Galuth, by definition are dealing with the task and the necessity of formulating some type of Jewish existence, even though it's a not, not a very vibrant and not a, not a truly sustainable one, and not something that is authentic. Nevertheless, it is something. It's keeping the patient alive until something better can be, comes along or something better can be done. So we have the Yahadut of Chutzar, it says Rav Kook, is the Tzipit Ali Shua Yahadut, the Judaism of, of looking forward to something greater. Whereas the Yadut of, of Torah of Eretz Yisrael, the Yadut of, Torah of Eretz Yisrael, is the Yeshua. That is the, the thing to which you are looking forward. And that is something that we have to understand. On top of that, there is the, the natural corollary of what we just said, and that is that in Chutz Laaret, in the Galuth, Judaism was required to focus almost entirely on the spiritual, on spirituality and the study of Torah. Even though the Mishnah tells us that uh, it is not the study that is the main thing but the actual putting into practice. And just as the Gemara tells us the study of Torah is great because it it, it brings about and sets in motion th things in motion so that it will come into, into reality, it will be actualized. Nevertheless, in Chutzar it's where you cannot actualize much of the Torah, and much of it therefore is almost a dead letter, and therefore hypothetical or virtual. What you can do mainly is the study, and be connected to the, to the Torah through the study of it, as a kind of a theory, so that you won't forget, as the, the Sifrei, says that the Jews keep the Torah and Chutz Laaretz so they won't forget, so that when they come back they'll, they'll, they'll return, they will know what to do. 
In the same way, the Talmud, the study of of Torah in, in Chutz Laaretz becomes the the Ikar, becomes in fact the the only uh, and and major linchpin on which the the Judaism of Chutz Laaretz uh, revolves. Whereas in Eretz Yisrael, which is the Yeshua, as we explained, we are now in a place, in a situation, in a time when we have to discuss putting this into practice, and not just discuss it, but actually do it, put it into practice, to live it. In other words, in Chutzah, as you're reading the instruction manual, in Eretz Yisrael, it's time to start using the machine. That is uh, one aspect of Torah Eretz Yisrael. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. And a word to our viewers. If you would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with Rabbi Bar Chaim in honor or memory of a loved one, or if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael, please email us at office at machonshilo.org.